A moment later, they got to Ironsi, who shouted, quote, Young man. And Danjuma responded, Sir, you are under arrest. Ironsi then asked, What is the matter? Following a brief discussion with Lieutenant Ibrahim Bako and Lieutenant Abdullah Isheleng, a short phone call to Lieutenant Colonel Moritala Mohamed in Lagos was made, since Mohamed had previously asked the boys to stand down from their pre-planned coup. Danjuma, Dada, Bako, Sheleng, and the duty officer James Onoja opted to ignore Mohamed and proceed with operations in Ibadan. Major Danjuma was accompanied to the government house in the early hours of July 29, 1966 by 24 soldiers under Lieutenant James Onoja. The main goal was to isolate the premises, cut the Supreme Commander up from the chain of command and arrest him as a bargaining tool in the case of the boys who killed Okonweze and others in Abiokuta. Danjuma was under pressure from the boys on the ground to continue the operation once the building was surrounded. But Danjuma stood firm against the pressure. Lieutenant Sani Bello, who was Ironsi's army ADC, emerged from the building at 6.30 am to find out what was going on. He was arrested and told to remove his shoes and sit down on the ground. Members of the head of state's motorcard and delegation were also halted and asked to sit down on the ground as they arrived from their guest chalets. Lieutenant Colonel Fadri personally emerged from the building at this point. After a brief confrontation with T.Y. Danjuma, which indicates that the boys were there for his boss, he was led back into the building to meet Ironsi. At this point, Danjuma was brandishing a hand grenade to commit suicide should there be any attempt by Fajui or Ironsi to fight back. A moment later, they got to Ironsi, who shouted, quote, Young man. And Danjuma responded, Sir, you are under arrest. Ironsi then asked, What is the matter? In his response, Danjuma replied, The matter is you, sir. You told us in January, when we supported you to quell the mutiny, that all the dissident elements that took part in the mutiny will be court martialed. It is July now. You have done nothing. You kept these boys in prison, and the rumors are now that they will be released because they are national heroes. Ironsi, who was visibly surprised, said, Look, what do you mean? It is not true. At this point, Ironsi and Danjuma began arguing, with Faju getting in between them and reminding Danjuma again and again of his promise that no harm would come to Ironsi. Danjuma interjected, Faju, get out of my way. You, just calm down. Danjuma said to Ironsi, you organized the killing of our brother officers in January, and you have done nothing to bring the so-called dissident element to justice, because you were part and parcel of the whole thing. But Ironsi argued, Who told you that? You know it is not true. Danjuma then said, You are lying. You have been fooling us. I ran around, risking my neck, trying to calm the ranks, and in February you told us that they would be tried. This is July, and nothing has been done. You will answer for your actions. At this point, Danjuma and Lieutenant Andrew Mwanko, Ironsi's Air Force ADC, had a fierce verbal exchange, with one holding a grenade with a pin pulled and the other holding a pistol. But with the fingers of five other soldiers on the triggers of automatic weapons, Mwanko was outgone. When the group got downstairs, Danjuma instructed the adjutant of the 4th Battalion, Lieutenant Garba Dada Paiko, to take the pair to the guest house at Mokwa, pending death or full inquiry. But Dada was not committed to the commitment of safety for the two. After a fierce confrontation between them, Fajui turned to Danjuma and said, You gave us the assurance. Danjuma replied, Yes, sir, I am sure you will be all right. But he was wrong. He had lost control of the situation already. Both Ironsi and Fajui were squeezed into a front seat of one vehicle and taken away. They drove to Mile 8 on Iwo Road, where the group dismounted and went into the bush, crossing a small stream. Ironsi and Fajui were subjected to beatings and interrogation. 
It has been reported that Ironsi was shot by an angry northern officer because he refused to respond to questions and confess his role in the January coup. Sources say this officer was Sergeant Chijani. Fadri was not spared either. He was also shot. Although the Western Region publication Fadri the Great, published by the Ministry of Information in 1967 after his official burial said he had offered to die rather than abandon his guest. Those involved in his arrest and assassination insist that he was an even more critical target than Iran C. Please like this video so that others can see it as well. Don't forget to subscribe to his pool media. Subscription is free. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Peace.